Welcome back to the day 10 of the 100 days of hell with the Python algo trading. Today I am very happy that we are able to complete 10% of this 100 days of hell with the Python algo trading. So let's quickly revise what we have done in the previous session and then we'll proceed with today's session. So, so in previous session we have covered that what are constructor function and what is self keyword and what is the golden rule of object oriented programming. So today we'll quickly revise that and then we will see the next topic. So as we have covered the golden rule of object oriented programming that only and only objects can access the attributes and methods of a class, right? And what are the objects? So let's see, this is a class. And when I create an object like strategy one is equals to the class name, right? Trading strategy and parenthesis. So this is the class name and this is the object name, correct? So when we create an object of this class and this object is known as the instance of that class, correct? So as soon as we create this object, this constructor function of the class gets executed, right? And whatever inside this, it will be executed. So now the question is, is it possible that these functions can talk with each other without the help of self? You just let me know in the comments. Can, is it possible or not? The first question is that. And why we are using this self everywhere? So let's say in this constructor function, we have a self. Then again, when we have the variables, here also we have prefix as self. And again, in all these functions, we have mentioned the self as parameter. So the question is, what is the need of this self? So if we remove this self from all these functions, whether these functions will be able to talk with each other or not, and whether these attributes will be able to talk with other methods or not. The question is that. So in order to understand that, we have to run this program and then we will see the answer. So let's go to the computer screen and run this program. Okay, so now we have to run this program. So what I'll do, I'll just go. So first of all, let's run this cell and I'll hit enter here and and now again hit enter. So you can say that we have the output successfully bought three shares of ETH at 1200, correct? And now when we check the status, it is working fine and it will show us the status that current position three of ETH shares and remaining amount 1400, right? That's working perfectly fine. So let's say what I'll do, I'll just remove these two arguments here. Okay. And when I hit shift enter, it says missing two required positional arguments, symbol and amount. It says trading strategy dot the constructor function in it. And then it says missing two required positional arguments, symbol and amount. Okay. So now let's go to this constructor function and check. So here we have this constructor function, but when we check here, here we have three parameters, right? But here in the error, it says only two required positional arguments. So that's some contradiction, correct? So in order to understand that, what we will do, let me remove the cell from here, okay? And now again, when I hit shift enter uh, while creating object, it says me missing one required positional argument amount. Why? Here you can see we have Two parameters symbol and amount but here it says me only amount so that's some contradiction and it becomes so confusing for everyone that how this is happening earlier we had three parameters but it says only two is missing that is symbol and amount now when i remove the self it says me only one is missing so now with this example we can infer two things and for that you have to remember the golden rule of oop right that is only and only objects can access the attributes and methods of the class. And here, when we were trying to access this with the help of object, we were able to access. But when we remove this self from here, we are not able to access. So means we can say that the self was nothing but the object itself. So what was happening here, when we create this object, automatically this momentum becomes self and it is being passed as an argument from this to this parameter, right? So when I add 
self here okay and again when i hit shift enter and again so now it says me missing two required position arguments means here the parameters are three means self is already here right so whenever we create an object the momentum is automatically being passed to this parameter self so means the momentum object is already there because as per the golden rule only objects can access the methods and attributes okay that is the first thing again if i remove this self and when i hit shift enter and again to run this cell it says me missing one required positional argument amount that means the symbol is no longer required why because now the symbol is being treated as self means there is no need to mention the specific self instead of that we can put anything here so here if i put symbol here then it becomes this object the momentum and again only amount is missing so if i enter amount here like 2000 it will say the self is not defined so means i will just replace this self with a symbol and this program will work fine so means with the help of this example we have inferred two things the self itself is the object and is disguised as the object and it is being passed as parameter in this constructor function and the second is it is not mandatory to specifically write the self keyword we can use any word we want correct these two things uh, need to be keep in mind while creating the classes okay now what we can do i'll just write the self again for the convenience self and here i'll pass the symbol so let's say i'll pass eth here so when i hit shift enter it says me perhaps you forgot a comma yes we forgot actually so i'll just add here so it says takes takes two positional arg arguments but three were given okay we didn't run this cell so and now hopefully yeah it's working fine so let's understand it with the help of another example so let's say what i'll do here in this constructor function i'll just print the id of self of self and we know that with the help of id function we can print the memory address of any object in python so what will happen here whenever we create any object the constructor function will get executed and then it will print the id of this self parameter here right so let me uh, hit shift enter and again and here you can see that we have the memory address of this self keyword 5184 now what i'll do here let me add another cell here so here what we will do we'll print the memory address of the momentum object so let's print id of momentum so when i hit shift enter we get another address and that is exactly same as the address of the self right and that shows that yeah both self and momentum object are same and we can say that the self is nothing but the object itself because the golden rule says only objects can access the methods and attributes of the class so that was the thing i wanted to show you and it's really crucial and many of the people really don't know this concept they are able to write the codes fluently but the deep concepts which are very exclusive they are not able to understand so if you remember this then definitely it will help you it will give you an edge while writing the code correct now let's move to the next topic which is magic methods that is also known as the dunder methods so let's see them so first of all let's define the magic methods so i would say magic methods are special methods which holds some superpower and what is that superpower we have already seen in the constructor function that the init that is also a magic method and that do not need any function call to execute that function right so we can write magic methods do not need function call do not need function call right and we have already seen an example of the magic methods like the init method right 
and one more thing that whenever you see this double underscore you can figure out that this is a magic method correct so in python we have multiple magic methods like the init and again we have one str we will just uh, see them quickly and we also have uh, repr representation then we have addition also then we have addition also uh, we have subtraction we have multiplication and we have multiple of these magic methods in python you can quickly go to the google and search the list of the magic methods but the main question is what are these magic methods and why we need them right so let me quickly explain you again that so whenever you see the double underscore before the name and after the name these are the magic methods and you can say similarly you can create your own data types with the help of magic methods and we can also say that these magic methods define the behavior of your custom objects and these makes your class more intuitive and more readable and more comprehensive so in short you can simply say with the help of magic methods we can create our own data types so you can simply say we can create our own data types or you can say we can create our own custom objects so custom objects correct and with the help of these magic methods you can make your class more intuitive right so i'll just write intuitive and also we can use these magic methods to integrate your custom objects with the python seamlessly so we can say integration hopefully you are able to understand the theory behind magic methods and now with the help of these magic methods we'll write a program and let's see how we can utilize these magic methods in our algo trading so let's move to the screen now what we will do we will create a new class and with the help of these magic methods we'll be able to perform many operations like subtraction between two trades addition of two trades right so let's start so first of all what we will do we'll write the class with the name trades then we'll define the constructor function so define in it and inside that we will give four parameters okay the first is self we know this will be the uh, parameter for the object argument then what we will do the first parameter will be the symbol right and then it will be the quantity and next will be the price means the user has to pass the arguments that what symbol he want to trade and at what quantity and at what price right so now what we will do self dot symbol is equals to a symbol then self dot quantity self dot quantity is equals to a uh, quantity then we have self dot price is equal to the price right now what will happen as soon as we create an object this will gets executed why because this is a magic method with the name in it and this is a constructor function so it will get automatically executed because magic methods do not need any function call to execute it right so let's see how these gets executed so what we will do here we will just print that yeah i am done already okay to verify that whether this will get executed or not so what we'll do we'll go here and we'll create an object with the name uh, let's say trade one is equals to trades and so here if i create an object without any uh, argument then it will throw an error that name trades is not defined so what we will do first we have to run this and then it will show me missing three required positional arguments symbol quantity and price because this object is by default gets passed as an argument to this parameter whenever we create any object right so now we have to provide these three arguments here so what we will do we will provide the values 
let's say symbol is equals to BTC. Then quantity, let's say I want to buy 1.5, which is not possible for me right now. Price is let's say 71K approximate, right? So now when I hit shift enter, you can see that, yeah, I'm done already because this gets executed and all these values are assigned to self dot symbol and self dot quantity and price the attributes and then it will print the this uh, string that yeah i'm done already and one more thing to remember that whenever we pass these parameters here this is known as the parameterized constructor and when we do not have any uh, parameter here it is known as the unparameterized constructor it is known as the unparameterized constructor let's proceed further so what we will do i'll just remove this not required right now and i'll hit shift enter and now it is created, correct? So now what we will do, we'll define another function and that is also a magic method. So define double underscore R E P R. And you know that whenever you see a double underscore at the end and starting, you should know that it is a magic method. Then I'll again add the parenthesis and then self. So why self? Because as per the golden rule of the object oriented programming, only and only objects can access the method. So here we have to pass this object that is self. Okay. I'll just add a colon here and now it will return a value. So here I can define a string. So a formatted string so here. What I'll do, I'll first write the symbol that how does this work? So symbol is equals to self dot symbol, right? Then we can give a comma here, a comma. Then we have quantity. So quantity is equals to is equals to self dot quantity. And then we have price is equals to self dot price. Okay, we have to add here. Correct. Now what we can do, I'll just hit shift enter. So now where we can utilize this REPR magic method. So let's say you are writing a program and you want to know which kind of arguments you should pass. So what you will do, you will just go and write. Okay, let's take in another cell. So you'll write print then and here you have to give REPR and the name of the method that is trade one. So when you hit shift enter, you will get the value as symbol is equals to BTC. Quantity is 1.5 and and here we have to write price. So price is equals to 71K. So with this magic method, you can use in debugging, right? Next, we have another magic method that is define underscore underscore str. And again, we have to give the self here. Also, it is almost similar to so return a formative string. And here you can write like the quantity of share. So self dot quantity of shares, shares of, and then you can give the symbol, right? So self dot symbol, and then you can give the price. So at and self dot price. Hopefully you are able to get my point. So when I had shift enter, now what you can do, you have two options. The first it's same like uh, the REPR. So you'll write STR and then the name of the object. And then you'll close the uh, parenthesis. And when you hit shift enter, you will see that you have two prints. So, and the second one is it, it says, 1.5 shares of BTC at 71,000. So this way you can tell the Python that how your objects look like, right? So whenever anybody is using your class or, and even if some different programmer is using this, they'll be able to know that how this objects look like, right? So that's how you can use the REPR or STR and you can these both as interchangeably, but these are the uh, right way. And you can also remove STR and by default, when you print any object, you will be returned with this function value. So when you hit shift enter, 
you can see that even if you don't write str it will print that str so whenever if anyone print the object this will be displayed correct so we have covered three magic methods then what we will do we'll move to the next magic method so now we have another magic method that is underscore underscore add and then as usual we have to pass the self parameter so self is the object itself right but now here we are trying to add two objects so we have to write other you can write any other word no problem but as per the convention all write self and other so what is this other so other is the another object so self is the first object and other will be the the, the second object right so i'll just uh, close this i'll just add a colon here then here first we will check that before addition we have to check that both the objects holds the same symbol right because we can add only the btc btc trade right we can add only the ethereum ethereum trade we can only add the apple apple trade we cannot add apple and microsoft right so for that we have to write a condition so what we will do here if self dot symbol means the symbol this one right self is trade one so trade one dot symbol is btc if it is equal to the other dot symbol other means the second object right so if it is true then what we will do we'll add the quantity of both the trades and we'll find the average right so what we can write here new quantity right so new quantity is equals to the self dot quantity plus other dot quantity correct and again we will calculate the average right so now what we will do we'll calculate the average price so average price is equals to self dot quantity multiplied by the self dot price correct and again other dot quantity multiplied by other dot price right and then we will divide that with the new quantity so i'll write new quantity so this way it should calculate the new quantity and the average price and in return what it can do it can return the modified value so a formative string we can say the latest quantity is latest quantity is and then self dot quantity with an average price of and you can mention here the average price correct so let's test this so what i'll do i'll hit shift enter and i'll create another object here with the name trade 2 and let me check so trade 2 and here i'll provide a 0 0.5 btc and at the price 51000 right so when i hit shift enter here what we'll do i'll just comment these and now let's try to add these two objects right so trade one plus trade two so when i had shift enter we get the value the latest quantity is 1.5 with an average of 66,000. so here we have made some mistake okay let me debug this so what is happening here the average is fine i guess yeah but in this price it added 1.5 and 0 0.5 so it should new quantity okay here we have to give the new quantity correct we just gave the self so new quantity and uh, we made a mistake my bad extremely sorry for that and when we hit shift enter we get the latest quantities too with an average of 66,000. So that's how we can add. Now you can see that the flexibility of Python, you have multiple options and now you can even add the objects and it will open a whole lot of new opportunities and dimensions you can think while creating Python uh, programs, right? So let's test this again. Let me give here 2.5 and the average price is 21, the lucky fella. When he hit shift enter, 
we get that we have four bitcoins with an average of 39,750. And so that's how you can use the add magic method. Again, let's check the next magic method, which is now let's take another magic method, which is uh, subtract sub and we'll close this and we'll pass self and other, right? Or what we can do, we can quickly copy and paste this one. So I'll just copy and paste this here and I'll just change some values. So at the place of add, I'll write sub, correct? If self symbol is equal to the other symbol, because it should be equal, otherwise it, it will not work, right? Then the new quantity will be, I'll just add negative here. And here average price is not required and we cannot find out that also, okay. Now, the latest quantity is new quantity with an average, correct, correct. And, and, and yes, one more thing, we haven't added the else condition. So, so in the first one, if self symbol is not equal to the other symbol, let's say first object is BTC and second is Ethereum, then it should not work. So else we can print or return a string, a formative string that both the symbols should be same, right? Similarly, in the else here also, we can say the same thing. I'll just move it here. Okay. Okay, seems good. So let's hit shift enter. And again, so here what we will do will, so here what we will do, let's give it 0 0.5. And okay, let me give the negative one here, right? So here what we will do, I'll just go ahead and I'll comment it out and okay, let me first copy and then let me comment it out. And here when I paste and I will change from uh, addition to subtraction and when I hit shift enter, it says name average price is not defined. Yeah, because we have to change here because in subtraction we didn't add the average price. I'll remove this. So when I hit shift enter, it gives me the latest quantity is one. So when we are subtracting, it will subtract 0 0.5 from 1.5 and it will give us the results. So this is just an example. With the help of these magic methods, you can explore so many things and you can create magic in Python, right? So, so this was the example of magic methods and you can let me know if you have any doubt and we can discuss that, right? So, so now let's quickly move to the next topic, which is one of the most confused topic of object oriented programming. Everybody think that they know encapsulation, but in reality, they are not able to explain. So let's get started with that. Okay, now let's see how objects access attributes. So we have an example here. In that we have a class trader and inside that we have the constructor function. And in that we are taking inputs of name and trading style, right? Then we have a method greet in which what happens, we have three types of trading and it will print out the greeting based on his inputs. So let's start that. So what happens here? Let's say I just run this cell and now let's create an object of the class. So let's say it is trade one is equals to trader, right? And here we will provide the input. First will be the name, which is Kuldeep. And then I'll provide my trading style. So let's say scalping. And when I hit shift enter, it will not print out anything. So here, when I type trade one, it will print out the object. But what we want, we want the name. So when I type dot, it will show me a greet method, then the name and then the trading style. So let's say if I want to print out the name, so name and shift enter, it will show me cool deep. And when I type trading style, it will show me scalping. And when I type greet, okay. So it will show me, keep it fast and precise, cool deep, right? So this is how an object access the attributes and methods. Okay, now let's suppose I create another object with trade two and in that let's say another name, it can be, uh, let's say Sandeep, okay, <laughs> Sandeep. And Sandeep is a day trader. So he will type day trading 
okay now we would like to print out the value of trade 2 so let's say i would like to print the name of uh, traded 2 so when i hit shift enter it gives me the value but what happens if you try to access any attribute which is not existing in the class so let's say if i try to access for example the profit of the day uh, any random word right so when i hit shift enter it shows me trader object has no attribute profit right but let's say if i write here trade to dot profit is equals to thousand dollar so now what happens you tell me just pause the video and think and type in the comment what will happen whether the syntax will work or not so let me show you when i hit shift enter it works without any error so what happened now it means an another attribute with the name profit has been created inside the class so we can say that we can access the attributes from the class and even we can create attributes from outside the class so let's try to print the value of trade to so when i hit dot and when i type profit you can see that we have a suggestion profit but this profit is not defined inside the class we have created this profit attribute from outside the class so when i hit shift enter it will show me thousand so this is how we can access the attributes and we can access methods as we have done uh, here and what happens when we try to access known existing attributes and also we can create attributes from outside of the class so let me just copy and paste these these here and i'll also let's say here we are accessing any random attribute so i'll just give here loss when i hit shift enter it will give me a error and what the methods what what we can do i'll just type trade to dot greet uh, let me type let me type it correct uh, greet hopefully it is clear it was a small concept but very important right